What do you say to the person <clears throat> who's the victim of abuse of power, of oppression, who has no power or recourse? That was a question that was asked to me recently when I was talking with somebody about Romans chapter 13 and how Christians are called to submit to those who are in authority. And I, I was really good, a, a, a perfect question, because who among us hasn't thought, okay, how am I supposed to respond when I feel like I have no power to respond? Our world is no, is not, has no shortage of injustice. I mean, those with power abuse power, misuse power. The temptation to fight power with power is always there. The temptation to despair, I'm powerless, I can't do anything and just feel like a victim, is always there. But today I want to talk about God's justice. God is just. We talked about that in a recent message. And one of the applications, one of the things that means that God is just is that we can trust that he ultimately is our vindication. If God is for us, who can be against us? You know, in a world where so many feel like uh, might makes right, when we understand that God is just, then we understand that no might doesn't make right. Right makes might. In the words of Solzhenitsyn, um, <laughs> because there is a God who is just, then the power of one person with truth is greater than all the power of the world not standing on truth. Psalm 26, verse 1, the psalmist prays, Vindicate me, Lord, because I have lived with integrity and have trusted the Lord without wavering. God is just means his cause is never a lost cause. That may be helpful as you face this next election or as you face as we face seasons ahead where we feel like those in power are increasingly hostile to Christianity, hostile to Christian beliefs. You may be punished, you may lose something because of your Christian convictions and activities, but God is just. Psalm 37 verse 5 says, commit your ways to the Lord, trust in him, and he'll, he will act, making your righteousness shine like the dawn, your justice like the noonday sun. The prophet Hosea said, if you return to your God, maintain love and justice, and always Hope, put your hope in God. Recently, I heard the news story of a Dr. Ken Elliott, a Christian missionary who was kept captive by Al-Qaeda-linked terrorists for, I think it was about seven years. He was held in these brutal conditions, they said, where he faced extremes of heat and cold. He faced scorpions and scurvy. The article read, incredibly, Dr. Ken uh, Elliott, who was 82 when taken hostage, would be forced to endure all of this for seven years before he would be released. But when asked how he could, how could an octogenarian possibly manage to survive all this for so long, he had a simple answer, God. He and his wife, you see, have served for decades as mission, medical missionaries in Western Africa. So they were aware of people um, suffering for obedience. Um, they often helped people who uh, came to them, uh, no matter who they were, no matter what faith, no matter what color, no matter what they could pay, if they could pay or not. As a result, they earned the respect of everybody in the community, the Muslims as well as the non-Muslims. And they were accepted as belonging in that community because they just loved people. They were not seen as outsiders from the West who were uh, uh, judgmental. As a result, when they were kidnapped, locals of all faiths were outraged. His wife, Jocelyn, was released after a few weeks, leaving Ken there to, um, to, to suffer alone and to build some bonds with a Romanian hostage who had also been taken as well. When I met Ken, when I met him, 
um, uh, Ken told the um, a, a, a news network he'd been a captive for five months. This Romanian man. I asked myself, how can anybody stand this for nine months? I ended up being there for seven years and four months myself. As well as the threats posed to him by his captors and the brutal conditions, his health began to deteriorate because of poor diet. No source of vitamin C, his legs began to swell, leaving him unable to walk and in constant pain. He said, I'd only seen one case of scurvy in my medical career, and that was me, he said. Despite his pleas, his kidnappers refused to give him any help or to find any um, vitamins. It was only when their leader returned and saw what was going on with him that he finally gave him enough tablets to restore his health. His captors worked hard to make him convert to Islam. But he refused. He remained steadfast to Christ, even though it was a long, lonely time. He said, the Lord had been good to me. There's no way I was going to dishonor him by converting to Islam or even by pretending to convert. When asked by the interviewer if he ever thought that God had abandoned him, Ken response responded um, with strong faith and an unbroken spirit, even in isolation. He said, no, never. God was always there for me. There's not complete certainty on exactly what happened to allow him to be made free. But as far as Dr. Ken is concerned, there was no mystery at all. He said, we believe the only reason why we were released was because there were a few hundreds, if not thousands of people praying for us. And we believe in prayer. Praying for us, knowing they were praying to a God who is loving and just. Through the centuries, Christians have suffered enormously for the name of Christ. And they've been able to endure because they have trusted God is just. He will vindicate my cause. I just need to be faithful today. Commit your way to the Lord, the psalmist says in Psalm 35, verse 1. Trust in him and he will act, making your righteousness shine like the dawn, your justice like the noonday sun. God is just. That means if your cause is his cause, his cause, your cause, is never a lost cause. It means God's ways are always right and good, and he will vindicate. Now, God's ways don't always make sense. They are often mysterious at first. They're often unpopular. They're often not pragmatic. They don't seem to work in the short term. They're not easily explained, even in retrospect. And often they're certainly not pleasurable and fun. But those who commit their way to the Lord ultimately will see his justice shine and see themselves vindicated like the noonday sun. The question is, can we trust God is just and right? Something really helped me recently. We were um, on vacation and uh, had a 26th floor balcony uh, overlooking the ocean. And um, some friends were generous to allow us to use this place. And I thought, I, so it seems like I can see a long way. <clears throat> and I looked it up and I read that if you're standing on the beach, you can see about three miles into the distance if it's unhindered. But if you're on the 26th floor and your view is unhindered, you can see up to 275 miles. If you're in Washington, D.C., that's like being able to see Pittsburgh from here. When the Bible says, think about that, when the Bible says that God's ways are higher than our ways, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We see from a vantage point, maybe we can see a few miles ahead. God sees from a vantage point that, he, that is unlimited. And he acts in a justice that is the result of an unlimited vantage point of the, the future. His view is always beyond time. 
So whenever Satan tempts us to feel like we are forgotten or forsaken, hold tight to this. God sees. God sees you where you are. He sees the future as well. Hold on tightly to God. He is just. Isaiah 50, uh, 46, verse 10. I declare the end from the beginning and the long and from long ago, what, what is not yet done, saying, my plan will take place. I will do all my will. So commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act, making your righteousness shine like the dawn and your justice like the noonday. Is there anywhere you're feeling forgotten by God? You're trying to do what's right, but you feel the result is not working. You wonder why, like Job, you continue to not see things work. You still feel like you're losing. You feel like there's no hope in sight. Well, when we can only see hope three miles out, God sees hope for eternity. And so we can see our hope in him because he's just, Heavenly Father. Thank you. We praise you because you are just. In the midst of our uh, confusing circumstances, when we've tried to obey and, um, and we feel forgotten, we feel like Job in his sickness, we feel like Jeremiah in the pit, Help us to look up to you to know that you are good, that you have us in your hands, that you are just. And help us just to commit our way to you. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining. Hope to see you soon.